What is going on you guys? It is your boy Just Helmeta here back again with another video on YouTube and on Beantown Takes and the All-Star game just recently passed. Devers, Bogarts, and Martinez were all in the All-Star game. Um, didn't do too well, but who cares? It's nice, nice to have them representing your fellow Boston Red Sox. And now we look to the second half of the season and what is the Red Sox plan? That's what I want to know. That's what everybody wants to know. Because the American League East is pretty good. It's pretty good. And I'm not talking about the original four like the Blue Jays, Rays, Red Sox, and the Yankees. I'm talking about everybody. Even Baltimore is at 500. So th this is this is really this is really going to be interesting because we have five teams that have winning records in the season in our division. So it's like, where do we go from here? Do we think we're better than the other teams in the division or not? That's pretty much what it comes down to. You have Seattle in the West Coast doing their thing too. So they're in the mix for a wild card spot as well. But you're going to have to face every single American League East team for that wild card spot. Because they're all playing good right now. Maybe except you guys, because you guys have not gotten a series win against your division yet, but you did split the Yankees at Fenway, and you have been battling injuries. You just lost Chris Sale once again. Like, that is absolutely insane. And maybe the second half, maybe they'll play a little bit better than the second half. Who knows? But um, let's see what NBC Sports Boston has to say. Do the Red Sox have a plan? And we're gonna they're going to look back at Mookie, the Mookie Best trade and what has followed because of the Xander Bogarts ne negotiations and the Devers negotiations. I heard the other day that the Red Sox starting point for Raphael Devers was Matt Olson and his contract extension, which was, I don't know, like, what was it, five years, 160-something million. I, I forget what it was, but it was stupid. It was ridiculous, like... Really? You're not going to pay? Th That's your starting point? Matt Olson? You're going to... It's not even a comparison, but... We'll see what happens in the second half of the Red Sox. And uh, let's just ha hop straight into it. If you guys enjoy these videos, leave a like down below. Subscribe right now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out my website. Link's in the description down below. If you guys want to help donate to go to games, my Venmo account's in the description. Anything helps. Appreciate all the support. Without further ado, let's hop straight into the video. We have two videos to react to today. Red Sox are a mess. I mean, you hear what Mookie Betts had to say. If the Red Sox had offered him what the Dodgers did, he would have stayed here in Boston. Which is not true. I don't buy that one bit because they offered them 10 years at $300 million. So... I don't think it was that much of a slap in the face. He could have counter-offered with that. But I think I don't think so. The Rafael Devers situation, but Andy, I'll just start with you. This is a venting session. It's a safe space. Do, do the Red Sox even know what they're doing right now? Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like it. They feel like a team that, and and maybe a general manager, uh, a leader of baseball operations, who is learning on the job what his role is and learning what his lot in life is. And my view on Heim Bloom was always he made his name in Tampa with an organization that could maximize its payroll. You bring him to Boston to maximize your payroll. I don't want you to act like you're in Tampa in terms of cutting costs. I just want you to get more bang for my John Henry buck. And I don't know that we are seeing that unfold before our eyes, but I do want to say, you know, Chris Sale said this on our morning show on WEEI, like asked a question about the MO of High and Bloom. I don't even think Heim Bloom maybe knows his MO as a GM. He's learning on the job, going through some tough decisions, big contracts, organizational changing decisions. So I'm tr the phrase I'm using for myself, viewing this from afar, not as close as Jason is, is I'm staying naively optimistic. That's naively optimistic. Hmm. Jason, do the Red Sox know what they're doing right now? How is this unfolding? <laughs> <laughs> I think it all goes back to the Mookie Betts trade, which obviously wasn't all high and Bloom's fault. I think there's a lot of involvement in ownership. Do we give this guy that kind of money? But when you look at the final offer, 
$300 million over 10 years probably versus 360 over 12. That's the difference between the Red Sox being maybe a World Series team last year and two wins away from being maybe closer to the Yankees and in more comfortable position to go for it this year than where they are right now. So you start right there by giving up Mookie Betts. And by the way, that trade has not looked very good. Alex Verdugo has not done a whole lot. Uh, Jeter Downs and Connor Wong maybe will be okay players. We'll see. But I think that's when you start to say, well, where is this team going? If it's not 2020, then is it 2021? Is it 2022? When are they going to invest? When are they going to go all in? I think Haim so far has played it very safe. Oh, pain. That picture right there. Mm. Might as well just rip my heart out right now. Ugh. He's not been all in. He's not been all out. He's kind of just halfway in. And we see a lot of $10 million investments in James Paxton and Garrett Rich. Oh, now this, now this one too. There's been some bad moves. I'll admit there's been some bad moves over the years. Mookie's one of them. I think Benny, you could say, is one of them. And Schwarber's one of them too. Well, Benny actually wasn't really working out in Boston. I don't know, because you're trying to change up his game. But, like, he's not a power guy. If he was the guy that he is now with Kansas City, and he was on your team, I'd take him over Jackie Bradley. And then, and then Schwarber, what a mistake. What a mistake. Give it to Schwarber, you add in Trevor Story, that was, uh, I think that was a huge mistake. I think that was huge. Richardson, $4 million here, $5 million there. He hasn't given a huge contract other than Trevor Story, and now you're wondering, are they going to sign any of their own guys? What year are they playing for? A Andy, how much more infuriating does hearing what Mookie Betts had to say kind of make this situation, hearing that if the Red Sox had offered him the same deal, that he wanted to stay here in Boston? So what was it, 12 vets, 365? So he wanted to use. He didn't care about the AAV. <sighs> yeah, Red Sox, you're kind of dumb for that. I'm not going to lie. You're kind of dumb. You're kind of dumb. It's dead. On the surface, it's definitely maddening, but I also think there's some layers to that that he conveniently kind of leaves out. And to steal the line from Ron Burgundy, I don't believe him because I think... <laughs> The money changed with the pandemic, the uncertainty of labor. I don't think Mookie Betts had the contract he actually got on his mind when he was negotiating with the Red Sox. I think he... Good point. Okay. Because I, 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 I totally forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. I'm going to stick to my original take. I like you, Mookie, but I think you're capping here. I think you're capping a little bit. He had more grand ideas of maybe what he was going to sign for and then the way everything I think changed he was, gonna, in he was baseball, expecting a 400 world, million dollar deal over the last I really couple think years, that's what he was expecting when he got to that point it was pandemic. like yes I'll take this contract this is more than good enough for me my family everything moving forward so I don't know if I really believe this revisionist history if they had just met that number that that number was that number at the time if that makes any sense go ahead Jason but but what what have the Red Sox done to give you faith that they're being honest about any of this. I mean, they lowballed every one That's of the true too. That they've had. That's and then gone true out and replaced them with bigger contract free agents who have not succeeded in Boston for the most part. Hanley Ramirez, Pablo Sandoval, David Price, now Trevor Story. They're choosing to... Uh, David Price actually worked out. He actually worked out. I I'll give him David Price. He, they, he actually, he actually kind of worked out. Not going to lie to you. I think he, it, what was, he played better in the postseason than Chris Sale. Something like that. How did David Price not work out? Without David Price, you don't win a World Series in 2018. I don't get that. And then gone out and replaced them with bigger contract free agents who have not succeeded in Boston for the most part. Hanley Ramirez, Pablo Sandoval, David Price, now Trevor Story. They're choosing to pay these guys instead. And when we hear what they actually have offered or what the reports are that they've offered their guys, Xander Bogart's one year, 30 million contract extension. That's a joke. You know, Mookie Betts, you couldn't get $65 million higher. You had to save that money or the Boston Red Sox. You just lost one of your best players. In Ain't no way. Over this. I think he's I don't think they've I think... gained the trust 
for us to say, you know what, they're probably they're probably right, you know, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe Mookie Betts every single time on this because I just don't think the Red Sox have shown in good faith that they're willing to negotiate with their best players, especially their homegrown That's kind of he Jason, stayed, we though. talked a little bit about Heim Bloom, but how much blame or maybe how would you evaluate the job that he's done so far with this organization, seeing where they are right now? See, Well, you've got a $240 million payroll for luxury tax purposes. You're not even in the playoff picture at the All-Star break, and now you're looking at do we trade our best players? Is, is this where we are? Oh. We didn't do anything in 2020. Last year, they love to talk about how they were two wins away, but I don't think they were actually in the Houston Astros class last year. They were probably a Mookie Betts away from being there. So I'm wondering what year did they have in mind that was going to be the year? Because if it wasn't this year, which I don't think it was, they waited until Trevor Story at the last minute to actually make a move this year, otherwise very incremental moves. What year was it that they were trying to compete? That's the one I don't understand. And so right now you look at, okay, they spent $10 million on James Paxson, who hasn't helped them out at all this year. And now you might be selling before you even see James Paxson. You spent $5 million on Rich Hill, 4 on Jake Diekman, on Matt Strom. You're spending a little money here all over the place, and it's not really panning out. By the way, you signed Matt Barnes to a huge contract extension. He's been MIA for the better part of the last year. So there's been a lot of money going in the wrong places, and I'm just not sure what year the Red Sox are supposed to be competing in. Andy, what role is Bloom playing in this? Uh, not a good one, uh, I would say, because Jason touched on it. The Mookie, Tretz, Mookie Betts trade might look different if Heim Bloom had maximized the return, if you had gotten somebody that got fans excited. Okay, we have to move on for a variety of reasons. He doesn't want to be here, tax purposes, all of that. But you brought in another developmental star, another pipeline prospect, as I like to call him in football, that is going to come up through the organization. We've seen Belichick. For example, do this over the years. You freak out because he let Ty Law go, but then Asante Samuel comes. You freak out because he let somebody, oh, now they develop Malcolm Butler. If you develop stars in that same position, it, it softens the blow to the fans, but he hasn't done that. And now we're just hearing these ridiculous contract offers. And I'm sorry, the Matt Olson contract comp for Devers is one of the more ridiculous things I've ever heard. And not even as much for the comparison of the two players in the year 2022, but more because of you're addressing a middle of the lineup superstar bat yeah. with a contract that you signed Manny Ramirez to yeah. 20 plus years ago. Yeah. Have you heard of inflation? You're being unrealistic within any any financial world outside yeah. of baseball, inside of baseball. Is there a bigger slap in the face to hand somebody a contract that's 22 years old? On every vacation yeah. or verbal home, there's Back. someone like you. Was that the end of that video? I don't even know. That was the end of that video. Okay. Yeah. Slap in the face. Fact. What are we doing here? Like on his, like it says on our website, Boston Red Sox or Boston Rays? Seriously. What are we doing here? I don't know. Alright, on to the next video. Could the Red Sox lose Ra Bogarts and Devers? I mean, yeah. That's an Henry easy speaking answer. to the Boston Globe had this to say about the state of his team. Quote, I feel good, but we're still in a building mode here. We're concentrating on building our organization from top to bottom. We took a good step forward last. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. You're in building mode? What do you mean you're in building mode? You guys keep saying you had two wins away from a World Series last year. Excuse my language, but what the fuck are you talking about? This guy's a joke. This guy's an absolute joke. Last year, we're taking a good step forward this year, but we're still building, end quote. So you're going to trade your good players Time away? For the deep dive. We got Phil Perry joining you're not going right to build now. around and them? Phil, I want to bring you in on this first since we had all that time in the A block to talk about the Red Sox. And you hear what John Henry Holy had to say about the fuck. state of the Red Sox right now. What's your reaction to what the team owner had to say? Well, my reaction is that he's wrong. 
I just right. would not use the word building as the defining characteristic of this team. This should right be now. a they retool. Built, Amina, they are built to win right now. They're that, right in yeah. the middle of the playoffs. They're a couple of moves away from, I think, really contending. They're getting guys back. They're getting players healthy that they need to be healthy in order to compete. This is why teams, quote unquote, build, is to get to the position that they're in right now. So there should be no excuses. And if anything, right. not only are they not building, but after listening to you guys off the top of the show, they could be due for a teardown in the very near future here. So they should be capitalizing on this moment, not telling us, not trying to sell us, John Henry, that you're building. Red Sox fans are smarter than that. And I think these quotes should really tick them off. John Henry says, "Oh, that, that, that just pissed me off, and that kind of made Phil Perry mad. But still, uh, but we focus on your when Pittsburgh you Penguins at the Red Sox. What happens if they don't invest at the trade deadline? What does that mean about where the team will be towards the end of this season?" Realistically, I think they will be bringing pieces in at the deadline. I don't think they're going to be sellers. I know Tomasi alluded to the fact that they might get rid of JD or one of these big pieces that's up at the end of the year at the deadline. I'd be stunned, honestly, if that happens. And I agree with Perry that they're not that far away from being a legitimate World Series title contender. I don't think you need that many more pieces on top of a team that started the year terribly at 10 and 19. They played like 102 win pace since then. Obviously, four and eight July isn't great. Going into the All Star break with the Rays and Yankees here might lose both the series. Not great. But they're not that far from being a team that's really trying to contend for a title. Oh, this I'm is not Steve. That I can't hey, act like I'm Steve? upset about the John Henry line. They have guys that are coming up, so I think that's more the building thing that you have a team that contends and a team that has prospects. That's what Haim talks about all the time. So I'm not that upset about that. I'm more upset that if Xander uh, goes and they don't give him a legitimate deal. Right. But yeah, I think they're going to get some pieces at the deadline and not sell. Tomasi, you think that the Red Sox could be sellers at the trade deadline. Why did they make what Steve would look that a little look like for this there. organization? Yeah, I mean, to I me, it could be a little of both. I mean, it could be a trade deadline like last year where you go out and you get a couple of relievers who don't really move the needle, but then one of them, Hansel Robles, ended up helping you quite a bit. Uh, maybe you get a Kyle Schwarber type bat for first base. Uh, so that is good. You know, that would be enough because... This is kind of like a last stand situation to me when you talk about all the free agents. But then looking ahead, this is why I am not convinced that they might not try to sell off one of their big contracts. If you're Heim Bloom and everything is about building towards a future and sustainable this and that, and you have all of these big free agents who we're going to list, why wouldn't you take advantage of a market to try to get something for them now as opposed to, you know, waiting until they leave in free agency and all you get is a draft pick? So whether it's Evaldi, whether it's J.D. Martinez, whether it's Christian Vasquez, I think even within the Red Sox clubhouse, there is doubt among the players that all those guys are going to be here when August and, 2nd. And if they do that, I mean, they're punting on the season, mm -hmm. which is not right. where they should be. The, the farm system's okay. We, we've heard it from, from John and others. It's gotten a lot better. Right. In the last couple of years here, it happened It happened quickly. They were in the basement in terms of league-wide prospect systems, but they're not there anymore. So there's really no reason for you to sell off these pieces and try to build that thing up again. Again, Back. they're already there. Not only should fans be unhappy about some of the commentary from John Henry today, how do you feel if you're Alex Cora or if you're the players in that clubhouse? John right? mentioned last year's trade deadline. We saw this happen a year ago where they didn't do enough and it really impacted that team. I'm sure it impacted the manager, but the players were very open about it as well. It impacted them on the field. The same thing will happen this Again. time around if they don't help this group out. Right. Steve, when you take a look at the Red Sox, what are some of the areas that they do need to fill at the trade deadline if they want to be in playoff contention? Uh, first base? Let's start with first base. Maybe some starting help because Paxton is hurt. Rich Hill hasn't been good. Maybe another starting pitcher. Relief. Bullpen. Definitely, without a doubt. An outfielder. You can go on and on what they need. They don't need a shortstop, obviously. They don't need a third baseman, obviously. They don't need a second baseman because they got Story coming back. They got Vasquez behind the plate. They don't really need that, but like... In terms of needs, another outfielder, bullpen, maybe another starting pitcher. Well, actually, I, I'm going to rephrase that. Another starting pitcher because Sale just went down again. 
And let me start first base for you. Because that's the first thing you should be doing is getting a first baseman. Well, the obvious ones are closer and first base. I know yep. Franchi and Bobby Dahlbeck experiment has been an interesting one, to say the least. I was a huge Franchi guy with what he was doing at the start of the year. Now it's, I mean, that play last night's inexcusable. Throwing it to Vasquez, he's not even looking at you. He's trying to get time from the ump. He's dropping balls. Uh, uh, Trevor Story had a great play at second base. Decides to throw it to first when he realized he couldn't get to second. It was about a week ago. And Franchi drops it right in his glove. So it's hard to see those. Uh, you want to bring in maybe a guy like Josh Bell. Closer situation is what I care about more. You're talking about Alex Cora, uh, Phil. I think he would be happy if they can have a legitimate closer and he doesn't have to do this. Okay, maybe of all these closing tonight, maybe it's Whitlock, uh, maybe it's Tanner Houck. It would be nice if they could have a legitimate guy at the end of the bullpen that knows he's the closer, that can do it, and that's legitimately ready to perform at the postseason level. They haven't yep. had that in a while. It would be nice to have. Yep. And Tomasi, are the Red Sox right now in last dance mode where they have to go all in at the trade deadline, or do they have a little bit of flexibility? They should be going all in on this, in. you know, nucleus. Right. This is the core of this team that Bloom inherited. We recognize that there are a lot of free agents. Most of them probably aren't going to be here next year. You have a shot right now. This team is not that far away. You, we're two weeks removed from them playing 800 baseball for more than a month. That's the sign of a good team, but it needs just a little bit of help. And, you know, I'm going to go back. Rob Bradford did a podcast with J.D. Martinez where he talked about how the veteran players there look around and they recognize, do you want to let us go without getting anything for us? If players are talking like that to media members, then you know that's how they're talking internally. So to go back to what Phil said about, you know, the players aren't going to accept this, I think there is real worry in there that not enough is going to be done. And all I'll say is, what is this team going to look like a year from now if there's no Evaldi, no Martinez, no Bogarts, maybe even no Devers if he gets oh. the best treatment? <laughs> Forget it. You'll be done. Forget it. If you lose all those guys, forget it. It's over. It's over. You, you, you won't be in contention for like 10 years, maybe. Oh my god, if you lose all those guys, oh, you're done. You're done. Simple as that. You're done. What are we looking at, Steve Peral? What kind of Red Sox team is that going to be? Then you're really building. That's not what. They're, yeah. That's not where they're at right now. Yeah. I, I think yeah, I the mean, Henry line makes perfect sense if you lose all of these guys and then you're actually a rebuilding team. So, hey, if they treat it like the last dance, uh, maybe that becomes something where the players rally around each other. I got to agree, though, Tomasi, the JD lines to Bradfo were interesting, uh, to say the least. I think they were a little eye-opening. I didn't even think that a JD deal would have been possible. The fact he's thinking about it, that gives it a little bit of leverage, and I'm like, wow, that was that was surprising to see. That's scary. Hello, your translation. That's the end of the video. Works. We need to hire. Leave a thumbs supplies. up if you guys enjoy. Subscribe now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out our website. Links in the description down below. If you guys want to help donate to go to these games. Anything helps. Appreciate all the love support. My Venmo's in the description. Yikes. Players are talking like that. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean, you have to go all in, right? Right? Get Josh Bell for pretty much nothing. I like that. That's a good idea. I mean, the Nationals would be willing to sell his contract off because it lo looks like they're going to be trading Juan Soto. He turned down a 15-year, $440 million offer, so it looks like he's going to be shipped out. So... You can get Josh Bell on a cheap price where you don't have to deplete into your big prospects or whatever. That would definitely help. If you can, like Steve said, a legitimate closer would definitely help out the bullpen. I think Steve kind of nailed it, though. I mean, you could definitely need another outfield piece, I would argue. But... Man, don't look good. Thank you guys for watching. It's been Jesse. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, guys.